Hi. Um, welcome everyone to our community space tag. Um, the future of privacy and security in Web3. Um, my name is Rita. I'm the community manager at Third Academy, and I'm excited to be hosting this. Um, sorry, if you're not speaking, can you mute your mic? I'm getting feedback. Thank you. All right. So, um, yes, I'm excited to be hosting this important discussion today um, because privacy and security, you know, the very critical topic in today's world in Web3 today. And I believe that it's going to become more important in the future of Web3 as, you know, we are moving away from, you know, these data hungry platforms of Web2 and embracing a more user centric approach, you know, to the way that we use the um, internet. So this means that users will have more control over their own data. You'll be able to interact with the internet in a more secure and private way. You know, but then with great power comes with great responsibility. So as we move into this new era of the internet, we need to, you know, make sure that we are doing everything, you know, that we can to make sure that you secure your privacy and you stay secure. Today, I'm joined by a special guest, um, Pope Black, uh, who is the um, African lead at in the Secret Network, and he'll be sharing his insights on the most important challenges and opportunities um, in the space consigning this topic. Hi, Pope. Do you want to um, introduce yourself and let's meet you? Hello, everyone. Um, Pope Black, I believe everyone can hear me. Yes, we can, loud and clear. Okay, yeah, thanks so much for inviting me to, to, uh, to today's community space. And the community is looking good. And yeah, nice to meet everyone here. This is the first space that might be in the Metaverse. So, I am Paul Black. I'm the lead for Secret Network Africa. I'm also the lead at the Secret Agency DAO. I came into the space 2020, but I came in full time 2021. I work full time in Web3. Before I started working at Secret Network, I was working for a press and media complaint for about seven years. I was the main editor for the company until I found out about Web3 then. I transited into Web3 and here I am today, working in Web3 full-time and exploring the ecosystem, learning more every day. So yeah, basically this is where I am. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, great introduction. All right, so um, if you are listening to us, if you're live in the Metaverse or you're on YouTube, um, you know, you would have a, a time to, you know, have questions answered. So if you have any question concerning this topic or concerning what Pope Black will share with us today, um, we'll make sure to um, get to that and share with him. Um, so to jump, right, to jump right into the question that I have, right, the first question to kick start our, our talk today is, um, in your opinion, right, what would you consider as the most pressing private, privacy and security concerns, you know, pressing... Um, the people who are adopting, you know, Web3 um, today, what would you say is the most pressing privacy and security concerns? Okay, thank you very much for that question, Rita. So, regarding the most pressing and privacy security concern in Web3, I would say <clears throat> this has to do with users, you know, facing risks such as data bridges, unauthorized access, and one of the most important is lack of control over personal information. You know, uh, I think it was last week, uh, there was another uh, bridge. I think it was from uh, probably Solana, or I don't know the ecosystem. Now, this bridge, and these breaches has been occurring for quite some time, and this is one of the threats to web adoption. The security breach is something you know, most ecosystems are working on, and they're trying to uh, what they are trying to you know secure their ecosystem, especially the bridge users use, and also the DEXs people interact with. But still, yeah, the issue has kind of reduced, but we still face a lot of security threats in the web ecosystem. Also, lack of control over personal information. This, I would say, is just one of the major uh, issues because 
me sending a me sending someone probably USDT or BTC or it is like me exposing my financial estate to someone. Immediately I send my immediately I send someone the token. That person can check out my wallet address, see the numbers of tokens I hold, see my transaction history, see the numbers of dApps I've interacted with on the blockchain. And to me, this does not actually make sense in the wider sense. And it doesn't make me feel secure using the blockchain, uh, using uh, the dApps or using using the tools in Web3 ecosystem. So personally, I think these are the concerning things about in you know, the Web3 and also fetching uh fetching attack, which has been kind of frequent today. Uh, one of our dApps on our ecosystem had this phishing attack. The Discord accounts was hacked, and they uh, started sending out some phishing websites. And uh, we're glad that we're able to control the situation on time. And no user, no loss of funds for many users, so which was really good. But yeah, these are some of the security threats we face every day, and also lack of personal information, lack of control over personal information. Thank you. Interesting. And then what would you say, you know, is the best way that we can actually empower individuals to have like greater control over their data and privacy in Web3? What would your um, opinion be concerning that? So, well, you know, like, like I got to tell people before coming to Web3 or uh, one of the, you know, one of the, you know, first thing you need to do before venturing into Web3 is education, which is very important. Like most of us got into Web3 based on the hype, the FOMO, and so on. We were not uh, well oriented and we didn't receive the basic education on how to stay safe in the, in the ecosystem. You know, there are some uh, guides you need to follow in order to stay secure, which include um, uh, storing your token in a non custodial wallet address which include checking our websites before clicking on them, which include using some ad blocker or, or malware blocker. Also, yeah, um, trying to be careful the kind of decks interact with or the kind of ecosystem mass contracts interact with to make sure that you are kind of safe and secure. Um, these are the things most people are not kind of well educated on. Whenever people are looking for a job, they will do whatever it is they are asked to do without actually reading or trying to make inquiry or trying to check reviews from this platform. They'll just do anything else to do just to make the money. But at the end of the day, they lose their funds. Also, one of the ways I think people could actually manage their data is by using, you know, centralized platform. And, you know, using this uh, decentralized platform has to do it, knowing the kind of platform you're interacting with. Like uh, Uniswap, which is uh, the biggest DEX in Web3. A lot of people are familiar, familiar with Uniswap, the interface, but Uniswap also have a uh, front end whereby now anyone can list a token and anyone can probably provide liquidity for this pool or do whatever it is they want to do. But in the wider sense, the front end for some of these DEXs are not really secure compared to the main DEX because the front end is permissionless which means hackers, bad actors can just manipulate anybody to doing, to provide liquidity or probably interacting with any of these uh, stuff and then they get scammed. So, you know, there are several things which people need to understand before assessing some of these dApps. You know, ways to stay secure and also when interacting with centralized exchanges, knowing fully whether, okay, these are being regulated and controlled by governments or uh, individuals. You might lose your phone. Personally, I've lost funds through uh, the collapse of some of these centralized exchanges, and there was nothing I could do because no one told me that you should uh, self custody your tokens when we came into the web ecosystem. We all came into the iPad. We were not <clears throat> well oriented, and we all just tried to make money from any angle. So it's like how we got to understand, okay, the proper way to get a job is by staking on the network. You stake and then you qualify for an airdrop or you interact with uh, the network smart contract or dApps to qualify for probably a job. But now people don't, people just, you know, do whatever it is just to get up at the end of the day, they get being scammed or um, they get their wallets being drained. So basically these are the things I would say can empower people. Firstly, educate yourself. 
follow the rights measure in order to you know uh, follow the rights measures in Web3 before interacting with any dApps and making sure that you self custody your tokens yourself. And of course, uh, there are several tools you could use. We have a uh, malware blocker, ad blocker. Also, I think um, you should try as much as possible to read some prompts before approving it, whether <clears throat> on Metamax, on Kepler, or any wallet you're using. You should try as much as possible to read through it to understand what you're approving. Thank you. I agree, not your keys, not your coins. I mean, if it's not in your um, wallet, you can't really say it's yours because you know, anything can happen at any point in time. And, uh, you know, the fact also about education, I think one of the things that, you know, have actually helped me stay safe in Web3 so far is that I, I don't click on links because someone asked me to click on links, right? So someone sent, sent me a link and say, hey, you can get free airdrop from this, or hey, I'm going to connect your wallet to this. No, I don't do that, right? I only click on links, right? When I want to, when I'm sure, you know, where the list is coming, the, the link is coming from, you know, it's coming from the official handle. And then if there's anything that actually, because in Web3, sometimes no matter how safe you stay, how safe you stay there's, not, there's always a 1% chance that, you know, you can be, you know, you can also like, um, cooperate in most of these things but you know, i believe that when you educate yourself and don't click randomly on any kind of links verify the links and you know that can actually help you um, maintain that safety and yeah those are very those are very good point uh okay so um do you um what are some of the most promising you know technologies that because you mentioned a lot of things First of all, we talked about like the concerns that you we talked about from the beginning, and now we've talked about like how individuals can have greater control. We talked about education, we talked about um having custody of your keys, of your of your coins. And now, what are some of the most promising you know technologies that you have seen that can be used for enhancing privacy? You know what you do on the blockchain, you know privacy in Web three generally. Okay, uh, so uh, we have several tools which are being used, which include ZKP Zero Knowledge Proof. We have fully homomorphic encryption. We have TIS cause executed environments. We have partial homomorphic encryption, and we have several other tech stacks being used now. You know, in Web3 to be able to provide not just um. Transactional privacy and also computational privacy. And in the sense that now we all know Monero, but Monero is more focused on transactional privacy, which means you can send and receive token without actually revealing the details of uh, the uh, transaction, which include the amount and the wallet you are sending it to. But you know, when it comes to computational privacy, this includes interacting with dApps on an ecosystem. Maybe when interacting with a different application, having it funds running an MEV resistance, also having your swap, your liquidity being private by default. And these are all possible using some of these promising tech stack, which I made mention earlier, ZKPs, uh, H homomorphic encryption, fully uh, partial homomorphic encryption, these and several other tech stack. I'm not a developer, so I might not actually go deep into it. Also, we have secure multiple competition. And uh, these are all cryptography tools which are being used by uh, different ecosystems to be able to provide both uh, privacy and computational privacy. And personally, uh, the one I'm much more familiar with is TIS and uh, FHE, which is being used by Secret Network. These are some of the tech stack and SDK as well. These are some of the tech stack we use to secure the ecosystem making it private by default when you know when it comes to competition. So yeah, basically these are some of the technology I would say are uh, promising to be able to help us uh, feel much more safe and secure. And of course, have control over whatever it is we are doing on the blockchain. You know, have the choice to make it public or private. Interesting. And we know that you're the um Africa team lead at Secret Network. I mean, the name is 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 is, a, is interesting. You know, Secret Network, and you know, are you able to share a bit about that and 
you know, how secret network can actually, you know, enhance, you know, privacy in the three. Okay, yeah, thank you very much. So uh, basically, secret network is a layer one blockchain with privacy preserving smart contracts. And uh, why secret network is different from Monero is that now Monero is much more focused on transaction. The, um, point A sent to point B, no one knows numbers of tokens that were sent, no one knows the wallet address that was sent. But additional privacy in the sense that, okay, now, whenever I interact with uh, Uniswap, it's being front run by both, and also we have MEV bad actors as well. And if you check on any uh, search engine, you'll see check out okay, how much does MEV makes in a year? Probably over $500 million. And these are being made of people's transactions by controlling them and extracting value from their apps, from their liquidity, or whatever it is they are doing. So let me let me make an example. So imagine, okay, I'm about to purchase maybe uh, let's just say I want to buy third academy token, and before I make this swap, I'm about to swap maybe one thousand USDT for probably five hundred third academy token. Before making this swap, you know, like click on making this swap. Automatically, the boards can can already see me making this swap, and what they can do is to probably. Uh, make that same swap and increase the gas fee and pick the order before you. So by the time you are, by the time the order will be, by the time the token will be bought, might not be getting that actual amount of token, which is the 500, it might be getting maybe 499 token. So you, it might not be anything, it might just be something normal. You feel, well, it's just the token, it doesn't mean anything. But this is, this has been done to over thousands of thousands of, or millions of transactions daily. In that way, before you sell, they sell ahead of you. That way, they, they are able to manipulate the market and do all sorts of things. Also, when it's about me, it's Uniswaps. Uniswap, your uh, swaps are public to do what you see, which means probably if Rita should swap to the academy token for another token, I can see it on the blockchain if I have a wallet address. I can keep track of the token she's holding. Maybe Rita is a DeFi DGN and she buys and sells tokens or she trades a lot. And I've asked her, okay, can you tell me it's something I, would, I can buy and make probably 10x? And she refuses. As long as I have a wallet address, I could scan it on the Blockchain Explorer, see the tokens she has bought, you know, what of tokens she has, see the dApps she has interacted with, because it's all public by default, which means it's not uh, private by default. So, you know, that way I can keep track of everyone's financial life, their details on the Blockchain, see numbers of NFTs you own, see whatever it is you are doing on the Blockchain without your consent, yeah? Because I can have access to it. But you know, imagine now having a more of a private ecosystem or a private uh, dApps whereby now your swaps and interaction with DeFi are not made public to the world. If you make any swap, you provide any liquidity or you learn from a DeFi application, no one is going to know about this. It's just private to you only, personal to you only, only except you choose to share. So now this makes a lot of sense. That way, you could keep your financial life private to you only, and you could also interact with other people without actually revealing anything to them. Now, if Rita should send me anything, it means she has exposed herself to me. I can keep track of anything she's doing. And to be honest, this is unfair. When it comes to traditional finance system, it doesn't work that way. It's more kind of private than the Web3. Of course, we need transparency on, in Web3, the but there should be bridge between transparency and privacy. And this is what we at Secrets Network are working on. This is what we are providing solution to. Also talking about NFTs. Now, initially I'm not a big fan of NFT because I believe everyone can just uh, see the numbers of NFT I own, see the kind of NFT I own. And to me, if everybody can see the NFT I own and see the numbers of NFT I own, then it's not unique to me. What makes it unique is, okay, this NFT cannot be seen by anyone. I have access to some private metadata in the NFT, which can never be seen by anyone except me. Now, I have this kind of ownership feeling over the NFT. I feel like, okay, now this is mine because only me know what actually is, what's, what's a metadata that NFT actually owns. Okay, what attributes or traits does this NFT have? Only me knows that. Now it makes, it, it makes more, more sense to me. Rather than okay, the whole world can see the kind of NFT I own, what's metadata it has. 
So like, for instance, now, let me make reference to one of the NFTs that was minted on our platform. There is uh, this popular artist called Tarantino. So Tarantino wanted to release some of the behind the scene uh, of his movies and also never seen clip before from his movies he has produced in the past. Then he felt like, okay, I want to release this as an NFT. But if I'm if I'm to make use of the public NFT, everyone do what can just watch this for free without actually paying for it because it's public by default. Everyone can see some of this stuff. I never wanted to show anyone, and it doesn't make sense. I want to share sh uh, show it show it to the people who I believe they value my work. People are willing to pay for it. So if I should pay for something and everyone can have access to it, it doesn't make sense. I don't have any form of ownership. Then okay, this is what they do. They came to our platform and we are able to provide them. It's what we call private NFT, whereby now this NFT can, won't be public to do what to see. It's private by default, which means now you can input private metadata into the NFT without actually revealing it to do what to see. That way, you could watch um, the clip from his previous movies, the, the behind the scene, and so on, without actually revealing it, revealing it to do what. That way, we can maintain a close relationship with the person that's with Tarantino, the producer. And also, uh, you as a person, you could enjoy it without, you know, sharing it with your world. That means you own a piece of his artwork. Now, this makes a lot of sense. Or it's just like me buying a space in this metaverse. If I buy a space in this metaverse, and I would love to probably put some things in this space, I wouldn't want everyone to see what's in my room, except I choose to share. So, you know, but in a, in a, in a, in a, in a public by default blockchain, everyone can see what's in the metaverse can see whatever it is you own in your private room because it's public by default. But when it, there is privacy now, I can decide, okay, this room, the, you can't go in there because you may be saying it's in there because this is my bedroom and I don't want the public to see it. So that way I choose what's public and what's private. So these are the things we are solving in Web3 and where I'm glad, you know, we've provide, uh, we've uh, had several dApps being built and and these are really up to be honest. We are also providing uh, privacy solutions to other ecosystems, which include Ethereum, Polygon, and uh, other EVMs, layer one and layer two um, chains as well. So uh, that's basically this is what we are doing at Secret Network. Okay. That's some that's some pretty um, use cases there. Um, privacy by default, you know, unless I choose to share. Interesting. I believe that you know there are lots of um utility that you know could be attached to that. Um, but now I uh, that leads me to my next question. And uh, you know, I I want you to talk a bit on like um ethical considerations, right? So when we talk about privacy and security in Web three. So what are some of the, like ethical considerations that we need to be aware of surrounding that topic? Well, some of the ethical constitution I would say is transparency because I'm a big fan of transparency. And um, also, while being transparent, uh, there should always be bridge between being transparent and having privacy. Now, if uh, let me make for it, let me make an example now to, or let me make an analogy to real life use cases. Now, if you are to probably apply for a visa or you are to apply for some sort of KYC. And they are, they ask you to provide your bank statement for the past six or three months. Now, when they ask you, when they ask you to do that, you can uh, just go to your bank or you could send an email to your bank and ask for your last three months financial statement and to be sent to your mail and then you can print it and send it to whoever it is that needs it, which means I'm in transparent. Okay. This is my bank statement for the past three months or for the past six months or for the past one. It is what I've been doing. It's been stamped by the bank. Now you can also cross check this with the bank. I'm in transparent to you. I'm not hiding anything from you. Oh, okay, these are the things I bought in the past few weeks. These are the receipts and these are the transaction stamp. This is it. I'm in transparent to you. And while being transparent with you, I'm still also maintaining my privacy in the sense that, okay, now you still don't know how much I've made for the past 10 years. You can't keep track of my the next month I'm going to receive. Also, uh, you don't know about my other personal information because I want to just comply with you. No, I'm not sharing everything with you. I'm sharing what you need. But when it comes to, you know, you share everything, it's impossible for you to choose what not to share. 
because it's public by default. Also, about ethical consultation, I'll talk about consent because now in Web3 now, without your consent, I can have access to whatever it is you are doing. Even though I can have full access, so I can have viewing access. You know, there's different between having, you know, full access and viewing access. Viewing access means I can view whatever it is you are doing, like I made mention earlier. By having a wallet address, all I have to do is to go to the blockchain explorer and I'll scan everything, check whatever it is you are doing. Without your consent, scan it's not a like no one can touch my financial record, my financial banking without my consent. My bank should call, should, should my bank manager should call me first. Okay, uh, someone is requesting for a bank statement. Uh, do you give us a uh, go ahead to release a bank statement or uh, they mail it with all the um, probably maybe by court mm -hmm. order. Someone is requesting something. And uh, you know, they have to seek for your consent first. But in Web3, no one needs a consent to do whatever it is done to do. And also, when interacting with uh, centralization changes, sometimes they cannot uh, probably put your account on hold or restrict you from doing some certain things because they want to. Without, uh, without even your consent, then later on you have to open ticket and do some server things. You know, that way, uh, it's not really ethical to some You should always have my consent before doing some things or before checking out the assets I own on the blockchain. But, no one needs your consent in Web3. I can check whatever I set you on. I don't need your consent. And to me, this is something we need to work on. Also, uh, there should be fairness when handling user data. And it says that, okay, uh, since you have my wallet address, you've seen, what level, you've seen whatever it is I'm doing on the blockchain. Um, because I'm being transparent, I have no control over what's public and private. That doesn't mean you're using this against me. Okay, maybe uh, let me make reference to uh, something that happened in my life. So uh, there is this guy. Um, he mistakenly dogs his uh, salary uh, wallet address. So whenever it is that he receives salary, if his friends will come to him, oh guy, uh, we've seen you you've received the salary. Can you can you lend me money? Can you dash us money? Can we go out to have some fun? And the guy was like, does this doesn't actually make sense? You know, uh, why will you guy you know keep making use of my data because you have access to it. You know, now he's unable to undo his data on the blockchain because it's been exposed. Now, what he has to do is to probably change that wallet address and use another new wallet address. And the issue is that, okay, the more you keep it out with other dApps or the more you keep it out with people, you are still doxing yourself out there. So, man, there's no way you can, you can undo that data. Also, uh, talking about uh, some ethical stuff. It includes smart contract auditing. This is very important. And um, I realized some new Web3 startup don't usually consider this as priority or they just take these things lightly. Some uh, is need to fund, they don't have the funds to cover up for this smart contract auditing. Why some is just negligence or ignorance. They feel like, okay, uh, we are going to build this, this app. I uh, will believe we will build a very good solution. I don't believe this is going to solve a uh, lot of problems in Web3, but when it comes to, you know, uh, the, uh, should I say, the security of the smart contracts, I might say there might be some vulnerability, but without actually doing this smart contract auditing, there is no way you could find out. So these are the things I think uh, it should be done. Smart contract auditing should be normal, should be norms in Web3. You know, security of your dApps should be very, very, you know, should be the priority. Okay, after considering the solution you are providing, the security should be the next or should be the should be the first. Because if users are interacting with your dApps and it's not secure, then they are losing their funds. So personally, these are the things I feel are uh, some of the ethical consideration in Web3. Interesting, interesting. Uh, wow. Well, I like the I like the um, breakdown that you did between like the privacy and you know the transparency so um yeah if you're listening to us um at the said academy's uh, metaverse campus and today we have we're discussing a very important topic and i'm excited to you know be hosting this important discussion with Pope black uh you know we're talking about the um privacy the future of privacy and security in web3 which is a very important topic um like Pope just mentioned you know um security is something that you know projects needs to 
that project most project needs to prioritize you know to avoid loss of users funds or even the leak of their data and we've talked about some very interesting topic you know we've talked about privacy and security concerns and you know we've also talked about how you can empower individuals on some of the points that were shared with of course with um, great uh, power comes great responsibility and we've also talked about um you know secret network and you know that's um, um for black is the team lead um at secret network and you know the interesting use cases that um it has for the space concerning you know privacy and security i'm sorry if you have any questions that you want to ask concerning you know this it could be about your personal experience how you can stay safe or it could be about what you have seen in the space and you're consigned and you know you would want to learn more right if you're listening whatever from youtube or like in the metaverse there's an opportunity for you to ask you know your question and you know have them answer um okay so um the question that i have for you next um for black is that um what in your in your own opinion right what are your predictions you know for the future of privacy and security in web3 because you know as the space evolves um you know we get to see more and more innovation come through so what would you say for the future of privacy and security in the space and what can we watch out for so talking about security i'm seeing you know having a very much more secure web3 ecosystem whereby now um, the uh attacks the Fishing is coming and so on. It will, you know, to be at a very minimum rate, whereby uh, it's very hard for uh, bad actors to get into your smart contract and just take away people's money. Because uh, I've seen several web three projects building much more secure and much more secure and safe uh, ecosystem now. I've seen also, uh, I think. Um, uh dabs giving bounties to hackers to try and hack the dabs and if it's possible they win the bounty so that way now you could test uh the the, the vulnerability of your dabs to make sure that it can stand anything so no matter whatever it is that is coming you could protect your users and make sure the fonts are secure also talking about uh privacy you know like uh accept network now we are providing privacy to both uh, layer one and layer two EVM chains. Also, uh, we are making sure that now the privacy is not just within this network. Now, other users from other ecosystem can also make use of our privacy without actually coming to into our ecosystem. And these are some of the things we are working on, and to make sure that yeah, we are able to provide more privacy solution for the wider web ecosystem. And of course, we've seen several other uh, web, other privacy focus, uh, web, other web privacy focus projects as well. We've seen them working to improve the privacy solution in Web3, and this is really great because uh, the more we have more projects focus on building uh, privacy stuff, the way the more we have much more secure and private Web3 for users. Whereby now, uh, it's going to make make a lot of sense for people to be able to interact with Web3. Like I do tell people, uh, big institution won't want to make use of Web3 because of uh, the lack of privacy. I don't think uh, some of these big firms would love to have their whole financial record public to do what, or their supply chain in public to do what to see. They have competitors all over everywhere, and they wouldn't want a competitor to see whatever it is they are doing. Some things are meant to be private to the company, but you know, when making use of a public by default blockchain, there's no way you could control that. So, you know, having a much more, you know, uh, privacy focused ecosystem of blockchain would really help uh, on board the next generation, of, the next generation of users to the ecosystem. Interesting. I actually like the um, idea. I like the you know, the idea of book bouncy. I think you know it's a very interesting thing. You know, you get to be paid handsomely if you can find something wrong with you know my projects i think that's actually yeah. um a very interesting um, use case for um utility for um, most projects all right um so thank you very much uh hope for this uh wonderful section um i believe that we do not have um 
any question so um my last question um for the day would be um, because you mentioned some um, very interesting things about you know projects uh prioritizing security so um what advice would you give them to this a uh, project you know seeking to navigate this privacy and security issue how would you you know, advise them on how to you know stay more secure. You know, I know you've mentioned a bit on that in the past. Um, what would you like to add to that? And you know, what final words would you like to share with us today as well? Okay. Uh, so what I will uh, advise people to do is to stay informed, learn about some of the latest acts in Web three, some of the latest threats in Web three, and also learn how to stay secure, how to protect yourself from uh, some of these acts dams, fishing, and so on. So try as much as possible to stay informed about all these things and find ways to protect yourself. And if possible, try to interact with more private ecosystem. That way you can stay much more secure and private. And at the end of the at the end of the day, we have to enjoy the ownership, uh, the, which is a promise of everything firstly, you know, control on ownership of data. But like I would say, uh, if you actually own something, I think you should have control over it. But Web3 is about ownership and control. But I feel like Web3 is not about control because if I should have ownership and control, I should be able to control who sees and who does not see. But you know, uh, there's no way since it's public by default, then there's no way you can control who sees and who doesn't see. Like you can't say, okay, this person, the only this person can see what I'm doing, or this person can see. It's not possible. But you know, having a much more better Web3 by now, you have this ownership and control whereby can control who sees and who doesn't see. And now I can believe now we are making use of, you know, how, how we are actually in the Web3 area. Really. Of course, there are a lot of things to work on. And I believe that there are also lots of developments being made and we are getting there. Well, thank you, um, very much. Uh, hope for this um, interesting um, section. I see some very familiar community members uh, listening in. I see Wonu and you know I also just saw Seven and yeah, I see Seven and you know several others. Um I hope that if you have listened, I hope that you have been able to um learn a thing or two on how you can, you know, stay safe in web three. Um and you know how you can also be two steps ahead, right? Because you need to protect your information. It's also important to also protect your assets because like we mentioned, with great power comes great responsibility. So, you know, educating yourself about, you know, security is one of the most important things that um, you can do. And, you know, Pope has shared with us some exciting trends that are happening in, pri in the privacy and security um, area in Web3. And, you know, I'm excited to, you know, See how these technologies will be used to create a more secure and private internet for everyone. Of course, with a variety of um, utility and use cases depending on you know individual preference and you know whatever. So um, thank you so much once again. Uh, Hope um, it has been a pleasure having you. Um, if you if you joined us late, uh, the section is up on YouTube at Third Academy. Um, and the space is tagged, the future of privacy and the security in Web3. So you can always um, be listening to the space. If you want to connect with our guest, um, his name is at Code Black on you know, X and on LinkedIn. So um, in the metaverse, you can um, click on the, click the link to, um, uh, to, from YouTube to our website to get into our Discord, or you can also connect with us on Twitter at Third Academy underscore. Um, join our Discord, and you know you can have more information on how you can be a part of, you know, Web3 education and the different initiatives that you know Third Academy is all about. So um, thank you, and yeah, bye bye everybody. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. Bye everyone.